Good morning, everybody. The title of my sermon today is, has been changed from I am the Alpha and the Omega to when I saw him. It is the next message in my sermon series on Jesus. Great I am passages. This week I listened to all the tapes of the previous messages. And at the end of the last several, I said, this is the final message in my great I Am series. Well, apparently God has had other plans and the I Am messages are still coming. And I have, I have the hope to do one more at least on the end of revelations today's passage i've chosen revelations 1 7 through 18 key verse 1 8 i am the alpha and the omega says the lord god who is and who was and who is to come the almighty let's pray dear lord jesus you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Help us to fall, fall down as though dead before you at your feet and let you live in and through us and help us to see the vision, the vision of your glory, the glory of the risen Christ, so that we may be strengthened, Lord, to endure all kinds of difficulties and sufferings until we see that glorious face one day. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, my beloved. I have really woken up this morning happy because I have a message to share. I didn't think I was going to be able to make it, but somehow by, by faith, and by God's grace, I have a message to share. So thank God. Um, I remember I have not preached since I finished the sermon full of enthusiasm at Christmas with the good confession from the goodness of his mercies. We have all received one blessing after another. And I proclaimed, I am sure that in the coming year and in the future, we are going to receive one blessing after another. Then I fell in my bed in agony for five months with my body weight pushing on my injured spine and core. I had been praying, Lord, make the environment for my house church. Instead of giving me decorating ideas or renovation plans, God wanted to make the environment in my heart, my Patmos. Praise God. He puts us in our own Patmos, the place of the vision of the risen Christ. Amen. Alpha and Omega. Conqueror. Victor. Coming judge of all the earth. This same Jesus bids a person come and die. Come and let me live in and through you. It is the way of victory in Jesus. May we find our place as though dead at the feet of Jesus. I am the Alpha and the Omega. It is the revelation of Jesus Christ. We can teach the word and we must. But the revelation is to each person. Directly from God. What a grace. As it is written... They will all be taught by God. Not so much taught, but
but caught, caught. Now, let's be whisked away in the spirit on the Lord's day and catch the vision. Some scholars despise the book of Revelations. Believe it or not, it's true. Saying the book of Revelations is an inscrutable mystery. Actually, it was the last book to be canonized and under hot debate. Later, reformer Martin Luther and his said his spirit could not acquiesce to this book. I don't know why. My spirit acquiesces to it from the very first to the very last word. Martin Luther never wrote even one sermon on it. And John Calvin and other reformers similarly held it in disdain. However, to the early Christians, it was not so complicated. It was easy, very easy. They understood. Satan, a great evil dragon, will terrorize you and kill you. But endure patiently by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony, because in the end, Jesus wins. It seems as if the words on this scroll have been sealed up from that time until these last days, when they are once again unsealed for us, upon whom... The desire of ages is dawning. Vision 1. Behold, he is coming on the clouds. Revelations 1, 7. Look. Behold, he is coming with the clouds and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And all the peoples of the earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. Scripture and prophecy often include a vision of Jesus, the Messiah. The Lamb who was slain on one side, one portrait, and the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Another portrait in the same breath. It is a paradox beyond understanding in the carnal mind. We see it in Isaiah 9. Jesus, baby warrior king. Wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. Behold, look, Jesus came first as the Lamb. John 1.29 says, Behold, the Lamb of God who came to take away the sins of the earth. And when Jesus was on trial, he stood before Caiaphas, the high priest, who was judging him. For blasphemy, claiming to be the Messiah and so making himself equal to God. Matthew 26, 63b to 64. The high priest said to him, I charge you under oath by the living God. Tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. Yes, Yes, it is, as you say, Jesus replied. But I say to all of you, in the future you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on clouds of glory. Who was being judged here? We can ask ourselves. Who? In the future you will see 
the Son of Man. In the future, you will see the Son of Man coming on clouds. Look at Revelations 1.7. Look, behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And all the peoples of the earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. Now when it says that every eye shall see him, it means every eye shall see him. Every eye from fallen Adam to Caiaphas to the last babe born in the great tribulation shall see him. Your eye will see him, and my eye will see him. For God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. For to him all are alive. This verse had its first fulfillment when Peter preached in the power of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, and more than 3,000 people were cut to the heart and saved that very day. Acts chapter 2, 23 and 24 says, And you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross, to a tree. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death. Because it was impossible, impossible, impossible for death to keep its hold on him. The power of indestructible life in Jesus Christ. Oh, man. The Lamb's fulfillment. When he returns as the lion, king of kings. Righteous judge, the tribes of Israel will once again mourn over him whom they have pierced. Some say the Jews will see their true Messiah and repent, and all Israel will be saved. Some say that this time it will be too late, and the mourning will be the dread of hope. Forever gone. And only left. Impending doom. One thing is sure. He is coming. On the clouds. In the Old Testament. The Shekinah glory of God. Rested on the temple. God's mobile home. While Israel wandered in the wilderness. Now Jesus will return in the Shekinah glory cloud. And let me tell you another secret. We will see Jesus. Also. But. I think. With a different view. With a bird's eye view. For the cloud is also. A cloud of witnesses. A great cloud of witnesses. And we will be in it. For when Jesus returns, we will be with him. Now I charge you in Jesus' name, have another eye. Eye of spirit, eye of faith. Then our sheep will also say, Sir, ma'am, I would see Jesus. I would see Jesus. Amen. And so we are tasked with one thing and one thing only, that they may see Jesus. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the Lion. Well, it is still today. For today is the acceptable day of salvation. And today means today. Today. Today means today.
So is this Jesus, who is coming on clouds with great power and glory. Verse 8. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was the Almighty. What does it mean, Alpha and Omega? Literally, it means the first and the last letters of the Greek alphabet. To me, it is a banner over all the other great I am passages. A to Z means Jesus is the word of God. A to Z. Did you know that Jesus' name is the word of God? From A to Z in the Bible, we see history is his story. No historian, even the great Arnold Toynbee, who wrote Challenge and Response, The Rise and Fall of Human Civilizations, can be either accurate or impartial partial when studying world history. It is because human beings are limited to finite space and time. They were not there in the beginning, nor can they see the future. His word is the first word. Let there be light. And he gets the last word also. Behold, I have made all things new. Amen. Oh, oh, praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All scripture contains Jesus. Amen. And is written by Jesus. Or God breathed. Jesus is the creator God. Through him, all things were made. And Jesus walked with Adam in the garden in the cool of the day. Jesus cursed the world at the fall and changed it a second time by destroying it with a worldwide flood in Noah's time. No green Bible or environmental Ten Commandments written by the Pope on recyclable paper can change the fact that he's coming to destroy it. To destroy it. I'll say it again. And Jesus is the one who will say at the end of this age, Behold, I have made all things new. Amen. Jesus is the seed of the woman who crushes Satan's head in the Bible. In the pre-gospel. Jesus is the covenant of Abraham, of Noah, and of Moses. And they are signed in Jesus' name. And his name is the word of God. <laughs> Amen. First to last, A to Z. The righteous will live by his faithfulness. Verse 8. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is who was the Almighty. Jesus is the Almighty. Who can stand against him? Who can stand against him? Who can stop him? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Isn't that the verse we love in the song, Lion and Lamb? Who can stop you? Ho -ho! Who can stop the Lord Almighty? It's a rhetorical question. Can you? Can anybody? Can Donald Trump? Can Xi Jinping? Can Putin? I think not. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? The answer, obvious, isn't it? He is coming. Alpha and Omega. He is coming to reveal I am the firstborn from the dead and the ruler of all creation. 
In Philippians 2, 1 through 3, we see every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father Almighty. Amen. He is Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, descended from David, the God of the Bible. Vision 2, one like a son of man. I, John, your brother and companion in the suffering and kingdom and patient endurance that are ours in Jesus, was on the Isle of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. First, I, John. Scholars argue about who wrote the book of Revelations because it is quite a ragtag, rough Greek text, smooth into bed in English. They don't understand how the author could be the same as the eloquent John's Gospel with its careful, smooth, and elegant prose. Couldn't be the same guy who wrote those. Well, I dare to say, it looks pretty much like a ragtag old man scribbling madly in shorthand while an angel shouting at him, write everything down from a frenetic vision. Perfect. Makes sense to me. Someone might say at least he could have done a few drafts and, you know, polished it up a bit for the finished copy. Well, what was the last thing the angel said to him again in chapter 22, 18 and 19? Well, he said, I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds anything to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. And if anyone takes away the words from this book of prophecy, God will take away from him his share in the tree of life and the holy city described in this book. Small wonder John did not do any editing. I, John, your brother and companion in the suffering and kingdom and patient endurance that are ours in Jesus. This is how John introduces himself. No grandiose apostolic authority invoked as in other epistles. This is because John didn't really write it, but it was more dictated to him as a secretary or a manuensis. More than any other scripture, perhaps. John described Christian life, this side of glory, in no uncertain terms. Suffering, kingdom, patient endurance, Suffering, kingdom, patient endurance. Suffering, kingdom, patient endurance. These things are common to true brothers and sisters in Christ. So then, what was the setting? John was on the Isle of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. Patmos is an island in the Aegean Sea. The Romans used it for political prisoners and dissidents. It was like Alcatraz, inescapable. Prisoners worked there chiseling granite blocks for construction from dawn until dark. Not much fun. Jesus, just as Jesus was crucified as a traitor to Rome, we have no king but Caesar. So those who testified to the gospel were seen as rebels preaching another kingdom than the Roman Empire. They could remove John from society, but they could not take the kingdom of God from his heart. And so, 
as with our dear brother John, so with us. Amen. We do not experience much repercussions for preaching the gospel, at least not compared to the early Christians. At worst, they we may be banned from campus or spat at or something like that. But a time is coming, and that hurts too, doesn't it, being insulted? I'm not demeaning it. I'm just saying it's unlikely you're going to be assassinated there. But a time is coming and has now come when gospel preaching will be illegal. Illegal. It is already illegal to pray out loud in public in England. England. Once the harbinger and sender of the world's missionaries. Now it's illegal to pray in public. How tragic is that? Well, although large bands of terrorist support groups are welcomed and encouraged, chanting how they want to murder every Jew alive from the river to the sea. Welcome. Just don't pray to Jesus. In Iran, many are coming to Christ, believe it or not, and many still more martyrs. And in fact, 2023, there were more Christians martyred than any other year in history. Be ready, the time is coming faster than you think. We must galvanize ourselves now to be prepared to suffer. And this is the purpose of the book of Revelations in general. We must adopt this purpose. Be prepared. Be prepared. Find the strength here to suffer and still keep testifying and overcoming. The time is coming. Mark my words. However, because God's kingdom is manifesting marvelously in our lives here on Patmos, we would never change it. We would never switch it out. We welcome the opportunity to prove our faithfulness and devotion to Christ and his kingdom with holy boldness. We welcome this. Look at verse 10. On the Lord's day, I was in the spirit and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet. On the Lord's day. But first, let me tell you a secret. When it says the Lord's day, it does not mean Sunday or even Saturday. It means the day that Caesar has prepared. Worship for himself to be performed by everyone in the Roman Empire by burning incense to Caesar Domitian, a self-proclaimed God on earth, on penalty of death for those who refuse. The Lord's Day. The Lord's Day was a day when Satan manifested worship for himself. And tried to snuff out all Christians. This rising of the dragon filled with wrath and bent on murder. I'm sure on the Lord's day, John the Revelator was overwhelmed with concern for the churches he served. The seven churches of Asia Minor. Knowing that martyrdom and death awaited the called, chosen, and faithful followers... He called little children and my beloved. On the Lord's day, the real Lord of all is revealed. Amen. To give strength to the church in this hour of horrible trial. On the Lord's day, I was in the spirit. In the spirit, 
John could be whisked away to God's kingdom, no matter where he was suffering. In the Holy Spirit, we have a strange sense of peace and well-being, regardless of our circumstances. It comes from the knowledge God is with us. God is with me. Everything's okay. <laughs> so true. If we grieve the Holy Spirit away, we feel kingdomless and alone. Everything's not okay. We quickly repent and restore our relationship with Jesus, that which we treasure most. The Holy Spirit moves with the word of God, quickening within us the confirmation of Jesus Christ, the Amen, and the sure hope of his coming kingdom. When the Holy Spirit tells us a thing, we must speak it forth. Holy Spirit tells us, whispers in our ear, speak it forth. Amen. And we should speak it forth in a loud voice. At least, at least in a very confident voice, like a trumpet. When we testify, the Holy Spirit blows a trumpet voice into people's ears, making them listen as to one with authority, the authority of the Word of God, the Alpha and the Omega. And what did the voice say to John in verses 10b through 11? A voice like a trumpet which said, write on a scroll what you see and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. The voice commanded me to write. In UBF, we write our testimonies and messages in the Spirit. Amen? Testimonies, messages, we write. We share them. With the churches. <laughs> Thank God. Not so complicated. Missionary Sarah often reminds me of things. Which I received in the spirit. Which I wrote and shared. So Daniel do you remember you wrote this. You know I remember. She says. Shepherd Daniel remember seven times you prayed. When you fell down as though dead. <laughs> And we're taken to the hospital. Uh, can't you remember that? Ah, yes. I know. It's true. It was from the Lord. It was from the Spirit. So. What about the house church, Daniel? What about your son, Daniel? It is from the Spirit. I wrote and shared. It is not a human understanding we receive, but revelation from Jesus. We must earnestly pray, hold me to the revelation, Lord, you have given. Hold me to it. You gave it to me, now hold me to it. It's from you. It's from the Lord. It's not a human thing. Hold me to your revelation, Lord. When the Holy Spirit tells us to preach the gospel to someone, we must write and share right away. Sensitive and ready to receive and obey the Spirit's message. Then we show God we can be trusted with important duties. What was the message to the seven churches? It was correcting, rebuking, encouraging, to strengthen them for the coming trial. So it is with us. 
Verse 12 says, I turned to see the voice that was speaking to me, and, and when, when I turned, I, I saw seven golden lampstands, and among the lampstands was one like a son of man. The lampstands are the church, light of the world, golden and precious. Mm -hmm. Jesus is moving around among them, moving in the church. Amen. Jesus is moving in UBF Toronto, moving and starting moving around at my house, moving in the church. He is welcome. Welcome, Jesus. <laughs> Come and visit often. In fact, just Move in. It's your house, Lord. Regarding the seven churches in Revelations, the church in Ephesus was the biggest and richest, but little Smyrna might be where Jesus preferred to visit. With its sincere group, of dedicated suffering servants. Verse 13b to 17 says, And among the lampstands was someone like a son of man, dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet, and with a golden sash around his waist. His head and hair was white like wool and white as snow, and his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace. And his voice was like the rushing of many waters. In his right hand he held seven stars. And out of his mouth came a sharp double-edged sword. His face was like the sun shining in all its brilliance. And when I saw him, I fell to the ground as though dead. I don't know about you, but this Jesus, this guy, is the one I want fighting my battles for me. He is our champion in the spiritual realm. The glory, power, and majesty of our mighty warrior King Jesus is revealed in this vision. Jesus is Jehovah God, a man of war. He wants us to join the battle, wielding his sword. His almighty power is what makes his authority absolute. His blazing eyes of fire are ready to burn up every vestige of selfish selfishness within us so that we can share his authority as his obedient foot soldiers. His white, hoary, frosted hair reminds us that he is wonderful counselor. And the sharp double-edged sword coming out of his mouth is the Bible. As it is written, he will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. And Jesus is wearing a robe and a sash of a judge in antiquity. Since his fiery eyes see everything, he alone can judge justly. His booming voice sounds like Niagara Falls. He holds the churches in his right hand. And no one can snatch us out of the hand. Of Jesus. His face is so bright it is blinding, like staring at the sun. It is because he is the light of the world. No need of sunshine in heaven, we're told. The light of the world is Jesus. The Lamb is the light in that city of gold. The light of the world is Jesus. And what was John's response when he saw 
the full glory of the risen Christ. Verse 17, when I saw him, I fell to the ground as though dead. Vision three, when I saw him. When I saw him. Verse 17, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead and, behold, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and hates. While I was preparing for this message, I was praying, Lord, if you beckon me, I will come to you walking on the water, my feet never touching the ground. I will come to you, Lord. <laughs> I got such a vision of Jesus, really. Blazing, flaming fire eyes. I was praying, Lord, burn up that which in me you do not want to be there. But then it was changed. It was changed. Soon again shall we behold him, hasten, Lord, the day, but Twill still be that same Jesus. <laughs> As he went away. Jesus usurps Satan's kingdom and holds the keys of death and hates through his death and resurrection. Ultimately, death will be no more as it is written in 1 Corinthians 15, 54 through 58. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is thy victory? Where, O oh death, is thy sting? Jesus gives us his authority to do the kingdom of God heralding assignment to preach the gospel to the nations. Amen. Do you know what heralding is? In the old days before TV and newspapers, the king would appoint somebody, you, Daniela, you will be my herald. Take this scroll and read it in every public square, out loud, boldly, in my name. And my authority will be with you. So be strong, even if they don't like what they hear. My authority is what is behind this. Heralding. That is what we do. For our King Jesus has given us a message to share, to preach to the nations. He gives us more as well. Matthew 16, 19 and 18, 18 says, Jesus gave Peter the keys. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed on heaven. We can bind even demons in Jesus' name. We can preach powerfully with an authority far greater than anything we ourselves can say. Authority is in the word of God. Because it is God's word. Jesus said, what I shut, nobody can open. Authority. And what I open, no one can shut. Authority. 
We must learn not to fight against Jesus, but see his sovereign hand in opening and closing doors in our life as he guides us. We are stubborn. We have momentum. I'm going this way. <laughs> Jesus, you're going that way. <laughs> rerouting. Rerouting. Always rerouting. So we have to learn to acknowledge. Oh, Jesus closed that door. No one can open. Jesus opened that door. I will walk through. Amen. In our life as he guides us. Let me ask you today, have you ever fallen down as though dead at the feet of the risen Christ? Have you? Have you ever seen how wretched you really are before a holy and almighty God? Has your sin ever been found out by his eyes of fire? And do you know what it's like to abandon all hope in yourself before this great Jehovah, mighty warrior king? Or would you prefer to keep fighting your own battle? I want to invite you now to join me at his feet as though dead and allow his authority to be manifested in you. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, you are the Alpha and the Omega. Yeah. You are coming on clouds, with great power and glory. Lead us to the place of Patmos. Lead us to your feet, O oh Lord. To your nail-pierced feet and hands. We may fall to the ground, Lord, there, as though dead, that our self, our selfish nature, would be burned up that the dross within us would be burned up by your blazing eyes of fire. And Lord, that when we see you, we really see your glory, the glory of the risen Christ, the glory of the word of God, raised from the dead, descended from David, And Lord, teach us that this is our job to bring people there as well. Just to acknowledge you, Lord, to acknowledge you for who you are and let you do your great redemptive work. Making all things new. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.